it and see what we can come up with and stir up the wood, you know, stir up a little trouble, you know, get a little, get somebody mad at us. And that's usually not difficult to do around here because when you start stepping on traditions and, you know, messing around with people's traditions, they get all upset. But uh, dig we must in order to have a more kinder, gentler uh, universe and bring a heavenly situation to earth. You know, I was thinking about praying. And that's an interesting thing in and of itself. You know, when you're praying, who the heck is listening? Do you ever think about that? Who's listening? Is there somebody in the ceiling listening? You know, people pray, oh, God, do this. There's these guys on television. Oh, we're claiming this. Oh, my God. Now, who's listening? You know, where is this? Somebody behind the curtains or up in the attic or what? And then, of course, one of the interesting things that you see a lot on TV is you'll see these programs and they'll say, call in for prayer and the prayer line is open. Now, in addition to that, what I see these folks on television saying, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Say, Jesus, come into your heart. Come into my heart. But you know, there's a funny thing. Because when I check the Bible, I just want to make sure these people are right. And I find out, <clears throat> to my amazement, that they're wrong. In John 16, 23, Jesus says, and in that day you shall ask me for nothing. Now, why? Are you told, as a Christian, to ask Jesus to come into your heart when Jesus himself says, at that time, you will ask me for nothing? Well, what's going on here? I mean, should you ask him or shouldn't you? He says, don't ask him. The church says, ask him. So who are you going to believe? Most people will follow the church. Jesus says, at that time, you shall ask me for nothing. And then he says something else about prayer. He says in John 16, 26 and 27, that I say not to you that I will pray for you. Isn't that interesting? Here's Jesus saying, I'm not going to pray for you. You go to the church, say, oh, will you pray for me? I say, yes, I'll pray for you. And the priest says, I'll pray for you. And the minister says, I'll pray for you. And your prayer group says, I'll pray for you. And your Bible study says, I'll pray for you. But you go up to Jesus and say, will you pray for me? He says, no way. No way. I'm not going to pray for you. What do you do with that? Why wouldn't Jesus pray for you and all these other people are going to pray for you? What's going on here? The point was that Jesus says, the reason I'm not going to pray for you is because the Father himself loves you. In other words, you don't need... Excuse me, excuse me. Drop the microphone. You don't need anybody to pray for you. You shouldn't have anybody to pray for. Because if you've got people praying for you, that's stopping you from going directly to God who is within you. You see, the higher mind, that's really the part of you that is God. There is a part in you that is God. That's the higher consciousness. That's the Father. And if you go to somebody to pray for you, they're going to recite a lot of words, and that's going to keep you from going up into the higher place yourself. You don't need anybody to pray for you. If Jesus says he wouldn't pray for you, what are you going to somebody else for? I mean, Jesus is saying go directly to God, and he says the kingdom is within you. That means God is within you. That means that if you will rise up into the higher consciousness, if you will set yourself into profound meditation and go up into the higher consciousness, you'll be delivered of the problem that you have. <coughs> Isn't, you know, that's real. I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. It really is. And how, how, do, how do people that are these Bible scholars square with that? I mean, if you say you're supposed to ask Jesus to come into your heart, but yet Jesus himself says, don't ask me for anything. Now, who's right? I'm going to stick with Jesus. Don't ask him. And what about praying? He says, I'm not going to pray for you. So if, if he's not going to pray for you, what the heck are you having somebody that's lesser than him pray for you? I say, you don't need nobody to pray for you. And the reason is because Jesus was trying to turn your attention away from him. He was trying to turn your attention away from man. And he was trying to turn your attention inwardly so that you could go to the Father, which is actually the higher mind. The God, okay, manifests in people as the higher mind, the higher consciousness. I want to tell you a story. This is good. There was a... This is an Eastern story comes out way back in the ancient temples of the East, okay? And there was this guy named Bader. Do you, do you ever hear me tell this story? And Bader, he lived in this town. He was kind of a holy man, see? Well, the, the, the official from the town go up to Bader and said, Bader, I gotta have you do something. We are in desperate straits. We need money for schools. We need money for a hospital in this town. I want you to go up to the emperor. And, 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 and ask the emperor to send some money down here. So Bader says, okay, I'll do it. So Bader goes up to the palace where the emperor lives. 
And uh, he gets up there, and the guy says, oh, you're a bot of the holy man. You can go in and see the emperor. He said, but I want to tell you something. The emperor is in the prayer room praying. He says, so don't bother him. So Bader goes into the prayer room. He sits in, the, in, the, in the, the last seat there in the prayer room, and there's the emperor Akbar. And Akbar is looking up. He says, oh, God in heaven, send us more money. We need help for the children. We need help for the hospital. Oh, we need so many things. Make my empire great. Send money so that we can do these things. Amen, amen. Oh, God almighty, send money. Amen. And with that, Ak Akbar in the back seat, he gets up and starts going out the door. And Akbar spins around and says, hey, wait a minute. Who are you? Where are you going? What, what do you want here? What are you doing here? And Bader stopped and he says, to tell you the truth, I was looking for the emperor, but instead I found a beggar. Well, the emperor Akbar, he, he was reeled right back on his haunches. And Bader looked up at him and he says, I'll tell you something, Mr. King. If you've got to go praying to God to get your money, then what the heck am I talking to you for? I might as well go directly to him. And before he retreated out of that prayer room, Bader had to take one more shot. He looked at Akbar in the face. He says, I'll tell you something, my friend. You're not an emperor. You're a beggar. And he left. And that's a tremendous story of what Jesus was trying to tell you. Jesus Christ said, you're the light of the world. Jesus Christ said, the kingdom of God is within you. But religion has made you into a beggar, sitting out on the outside in the back porch of the palace, begging for a lot of worthless junk, instead of going into where the treasure is in the vault in the inner place, and taking the authority that you've been given. It says you have authority to enter the holy place, Hebrews 10, 19. You probably don't even know where that is. It's your higher consciousness. It's through profound meditation you raise yourself into the higher consciousness. That's the holy place. And Hebrews 10, 19 says you have authority to go there. But religion says, no, you come and we'll pray for you. Who needs you? The next time somebody says, we'll pray for you, say, who needs you to pray for me? I don't need you to pray for me. What are you talking about you're going to pray for me? I don't need you to pray for me. I can go right smack to the Father. They say, well, where is he? He's within you. He's within me. The Father is a higher mind, and when you go into meditation, you go directly to him. That's where you're going, and that's what Jesus said. And I'll tell you something. You look up those scriptures in John 16, 23, Jesus Christ says, ask me for nothing. So what are you asking him to come into your heart? That's stupid to ask Jesus to come into your heart, because he's asking you to come into his. He's already there. He said in John 14, 23, at that time you'll know I'm in the Father and you and me and I and you. What the heck are you asking him for then? And what are you saying that you want somebody to pray for you when Jesus Christ himself says that he wouldn't pray for you because you don't need anybody to pray for you because if you start to understand who you are, you will find that God is your higher mind and you can go directly to God yourself by just closing down your eyes, closing down your thoughts of your mind and lifting yourself up into the higher place, the higher realms of the mind. You can go right there to yourself. You don't need nobody to pray for you. And that, John 16, 26, and 27, Jesus says, I ain't no way going to pray for you. And the reason, he says, is the Father himself loves you. He says, you don't need nobody to get between you and the Father. You don't need any intermediary. That's why we've created a clergy, an, an elite clergy. And they, they're higher, see, they're a higher class than the average person. And that puts you thinking you're some kind of low class or low life. That's nonsense. According to Jesus, you have a kingdom within you. But it's in the higher mind and the higher consciousness. And you'll reach there if you go into meditation. You've got to go into meditation. I was just prissy knocking something off the wall. See, that's what you've got to do. You've got to meditate. And you've got to set yourself down. And you've got to enter into profound meditation, separating from the thoughts of your mind and going up into the higher consciousness and, and directing your energy to the right hemisphere of the brain. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you want to catch fish, he says, direct your energy to the right side. Throw your, cast your net to the right side of the boat. Now, I'm going to tell you a little scripture and give you a little secret information from a hidden meaning in the Bible, something you've heard a lot in, in just a minute. But, but let's, let's get that straight, okay? You don't need, the next time you get somebody that says, put on a TV set, you know, call our prayer line, you say, get out of your prayer line. I don't need your prayer line. I don't need anybody's prayer line. If I got a direct line to the Father, I'm going to obey Jesus Christ and go right to Him. I don't need, even need Jesus to pray to, because Jesus says don't pray to Him. It's in the Bible, my friends, and it's something you haven't been told. It's something that's never been revealed to you. That doesn't make it not so. It's in the Bible. 
but it's been hidden from you because if you find that God is in you, what do you need all this church stuff for? And you don't. What you need is to come to grips with yourself and the kingdom within you, which is the higher consciousness. And once you lift yourself into the higher consciousness, that's when you touch God. All right? All right, we started up so far. Hang on, man, we'll stir up some more. Listen, I got to tell you, <coughs> the Christian Village Church is at 134 Route 9 in Forked River, and I am there every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And we teach the hidden meanings and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m., I do the Book of Revelation, but not the Book of Revelation that you heard with all this nonsense of the Russians are going to attack Israel and there's going to be atomic bomb. Do you know that these preachers that got away with this all of these years scaring people about Armageddon say God's going to destroy the earth with fire? What a bunch of junk. Yeah, so it says that in the Bible. It's symbolic. That's a symbolic language. It means that the spirit, fire, is coming down from heaven, the higher mind, to purge away all of the things of the earth of the carnal mind that hurt you. So that's the kind of, you'll understand that the whole book of Revelation is about your body and your mind if you come out Sunday night at 7.30. I'm there Tuesday night, <coughs> we have meditation. <coughs> that's 8 o'clock. And that's a great night. So you should come out Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock for meditation. We have the Tibetan prayer bowl. And we play. Did, you ever, did you ever see one of those things? I got one. Maybe later I can show this thing. It's great. It's a Tibetan prayer bowl. And you, and you put this mallet inside of it and turn it and it makes this... You're like, oh, you know, it's really super. But anyhow, you'll find a way, a find a technique there that will suit yourself where you can lift yourself above the thoughts of your own mind and raise yourself up into a higher consciousness. That's Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Elliot Strauss is there on Thursday nights. He's teaching meditation, and you can learn how to meditate Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. And then on there Friday night to teach Buddha and Christ, and then, you know, on we go. So we're almost open just about every night of the week. Now, another thing that I wanted to tell you about is that we need your help if we're going to stay here and share the hidden meanings, the, the truth, the, the meanings that Jesus tried to convey. And uh, if you could call the number, the telephone number is 609-971-0537. 609-971-0537. You can call out at the end of the show if you'd like to. And, um, you know, we, we can send you information about the church and the tapes. One thing I like, if you'd like to consider it, and by saying, hey, look, uh, send me an envelope. And then each month we send you an envelope, and you can put whatever you can afford in there, and that will help keep us here. 609-971-0537. Let's do a little Bible study here and see what's going on here, okay? Matthew 19, verses 23 and 24. I'm going to explain something to you that you'll see how through meditation and understanding symbolisms, you'll learn about Scripture. It says, Jesus says that a rich man <coughs> shall hardly enter into the kingdom. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich <coughs> man to enter the kingdom. Now, think about that. It's easier for a camel to enter in through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get in heaven. You say, well, you know, that's ridiculous. Obviously, a camel and an eye of a needle is, you know, what the heck's he talking about? That doesn't even, that's not even, that's not even a good comparison. That's just total impossibility. Well, it is unless you understand what he's talking about. <clears throat> Jesus never taught but in parables, see. There was a gate in Jerusalem, and there, I don't know, I guess there were about 12 gates that surrounded the city of Jerusalem, and one of these gates was called the eye of the needle. Let's put that, <clears throat> see, that's the gate. I got all this stuff here. The eye of the needle was the gate, see? That's what it was called, the eye of the needle. Now, it was a very low gate, but they used to bring the camels to that gate, but in order to get the camel through that eye of the needle gate, what they had to do was they had to take the burden. So you would say, take the burden, the burden, off his back, okay? Then the camel would get down on his knees, how they did this, I don't know, and he would crawl through the eye of the needle, see? That's very hard, and this is what Jesus was trying to say. It's very hard, this is a common thing, these people know what he's talking about. It's very hard to get a camel through that gate called the eye of the needle because you've got to unload all of the burdens off of his back and then get him on his knees, see? 
And Jesus was trying to say that a proud person, a person who's filled with religion, a person who's filled with traditions, a person who's filled with doctrines and so forth and so on, say, it's very hard to get that person to get to, to allow the decisions to be taken off his back. You know how many times you'll say, oh, no, man, I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to do this myself. You know, I've got to find a way out of this. I've got to think my way out of this. And you'll sit around and you'll go walking back and forth. Oh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to, I've got to figure this out. got to figure this out. Gotta, and what happens? You sink yourself into a nervous breakdown. Next thing you're taking Valium, you know, you're lighting up the cigarettes, you're taking a shot, whatever you're doing. Trying to figure out how you're going to get out of this mess. And of course, Buddha had a great line for that. He said, don't you think it's a little ridiculous to try to think your way out of a problem when you have to think that it's thinking that got you into the problem in the first place? And so what Jesus is trying to say, you know, you can take the burden off of a camel's back and get him on his knees and get him through the eye of the needle, but it's extremely hard to convince you to take the burdens off your back and symbolically get on your knees, which means meditate. Meditate. See, the pride and the stubborn nature makes that awfully difficult. So you'll, you know, you'll, you'll come in and say, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to go to church. Somebody pray for me, which you shouldn't do anyhow. And then the next thing you know, you'll go and they'll lay hands on you and they'll anoint you with oil and go through all of this stuff. And then you get out of the church and where are all these people? They ain't going to go home with your problem. You're going to go home alone with your problem. And then when you get there, what happens? Uh oh, you're going to go into a depression, or you're going to have a fight with your wife or your husband, or somebody's going to throw something, and all hell breaks loose. See? And that's why Jesus says it's very, very, very important. How in the world will you finally come to grips with the fact that you've got to say, you know, people say, let go and let God? Say, well, how the heck am I going to do that? Let go and let God. The only way you can do that is through meditation, because you lift your consciousness up to a higher dimension above that which is the human mind, where there are no thought, enter into this nothingness, beautiful nothingness, this place of nirvana, and from that point and in that point, you begin to receive direction from a higher dominion. And that's what Jesus said. So the disciples turned around and said, well, this eye of the needle stuff. And they said, well, wait a minute here, man. It, it, you know, if, if, if it's, if it's as, as hard as getting a camel through the eye of a needle, then who can be saved? Now, now here's a tremendous revelation to show you why you must meditate, why you have to meditate in order to really get yourself saved out of all of the screwy things that go on. You know, that's what religion tells you. Religion says, oh, if you, if you say Jesus is Lord and believe you got out of the grave, then you're going to be saved. From what? You can't even get saved out of a man come and repossess your car. I mean, you ain't been able to get saved out of a headache, let alone get saved out of what they say is hell. And they say all the... I, did you see, I saw this guy on TV, on a Christian TV the other day. You know what he was saying? He was saying, oh, well, this old earth is just a passing through point. I'll tell you who it was, Pat Robertson. This is, you know, another one of Mad Bombers. He said, oh, this old earth is just a passing through point, you know, and we're just going through here on our way to a better place. Baloney, you Pat Robertson. That's nonsense. This is a beautiful place. The earth is a super beautiful place. We screwed up the whales, we screwed up the dolphins, we screwed up the ocean, we screwed up the ecology, we got the rivers all polluted and all this kind of stuff. Why? Because guys like him are saying that this earth is just a passing through place. This earth is all there is. And we can make this earth into heaven if we get our minds up into Christ consciousness and make it into a beautiful place, eh? And, 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 and yet you, you get all of this thing, oh, well, everything good happens after you die. You know what that is? Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. Come to church. Give me your money. And then you'll get your benefits after you die. Hey, that ain't no deal. Don't take that deal, man. Say, I want, I want it now. That's what Jesus Christ, you know what Jesus Christ said? Don't suck her into that stuff. You turn around and say to that boy, look, old boy, I'll tell you something right now. Jesus says God is the God of the living, not of the dead. You ain't going to tell me the good thing happens after I'm dead. I want to have the good thing happen now while I'm alive. Jesus Christ didn't say, I've come that you might have death. He says, I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You're supposed to have a good time, say. Don't fall for this stuff of waiting to get out. I will tell you that if you obey Jesus Christ and lift yourself and practice the single eye as he instructed you, your life will change and you'll start to have a heavenly existence on this earth and you'll come into contact with God within you. So anyhow, the revelation, the question the disciples ask, if it's harder than to get for a rich man to get into heaven and get that burden off a camel's back, who can be saved? And Jesus Christ said, look, 
With men, it's impossible. What's that mean? It means with your priest, with your minister, with your rabbi, with your evangelist, with your, with your friends, with your neighbors, with whoever, with your church, it's impossible. Because when it says with men this is impossible, it means with your mind it's impossible. You're, you're going to get advice from somebody whose mind is just as screwed up as yours is. I mean, you, you know, you think you have these sex problems and you're getting all these sex thoughts coming into your mind and all this other bizarre stuff, and the guy you're talking to, his mind has got twice as many sex problems as yours, and he's giving you advice. And what do you both have to do? You both have to meditate, get within yourself, rise up into the holy place within you, up into the upper room, separate from all of that stuff of thought, and get into a place of nirvana or uh, nothingness where you can touch God. So he says, with men, it's impossible. And you say, well, why is that? The Apostle Paul says the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So if somebody that you're going to for advice is trying to think of a way to help you, they're using the same carnal mind that is not subject to the law of God, just as bad as yours is, see? But when you raise yourself above the thoughts of the mind, you lift yourself above the carnal mind, you lift yourself into that divine nothingness where you and God are one. You and Christ are one. You see that? That's the way, that's what salvation is. Don't tell me salvation saved me after I'm dead. It, that's too late then. No way. Save yourself out of all the screwy things that go on now. You want to get saved from the tax collector. You want to get saved from the doctor. You want to get saved from the cops. You want to get all the stuff you need to get saved from. And how do you do that? By lifting yourself into a higher consciousness where you touch God, you illuminate the right hemisphere of the brain. That's what Jesus meant, cast your net to the right side. You start thinking with brain cells that you never thought with before. And you start getting enlightenment, wisdom, understanding. Jesus Christ said in Luke 11:52, you take away the key of knowledge because you don't enter within yourself. And these people ain't doing you no good. I just always tell, give you all this advice. Here, read the Bible. Read the Bible. So some guy said, boy, he told me to read, I'm going to read the Bible. He opened to read the Bible, says Judas hung himself. Uh-oh, what am I going to do? You know, what are you going to do, read the Bible? In the first place, you've got to understand the symbolisms and the mysticism of it. If you're going to read the Bible, you've got to do what it says. And Jesus Christ says the first thing you've got to do is seek the kingdom of God, which is within you. There ain't no sense of going and reading. Do you know that these people nowadays, that's all they do is read the Bible? You ever see them go anywhere without a Bible under their arm? They're always reading, they're quoting you the Bible, reading the Bible. That's like going into a restaurant and reading the menu. Well, what good is that unless you eat the food? Ain't no good. I like to go into a Mexican restaurant. But man, if I'm going to sit there and I'm going to read how good the enchiladas are, what good is it if I don't eat one of them? I want to taste the enchilada. I want to devour the enchilada. I want to be filled up with all of this good Mexican stuff and just jump around those jalapenos, man. But I don't want to just read about it. But that's all they got you doing. These people read the Bible from the time they're little till they die. And all they did was read the Bible. But they've never entered in. That's why Jesus Christ says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I tell you to do? And he told you, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. That's an Eastern symbolic way of saying, if you meditate above the thoughts of the mind, you will fill with the divine wisdom of God. That wasn't bad today, was it? We did, we did some shouting here. We did all right. Hey. I want to tell you again, the Christian Village Church, 134 Route 9, Forked River, right next to Mrs. Walker's Ice Cream Parlor. I'm there Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, and we have a great time, and we get together, and we do the hidden meanings and the teachings of Jesus Christ. You learn what he really said, and it'll shock you. Sunday evening at 730 we have the book of Revelation. It tells about your body and your mind. The book of Revelation is a book of God's psychology and how you can master your mind and your body. And then Tuesday night is meditation time. And uh, Thursday night, Elliot instructs you into how to meditate. Friday night, I do the teachings of Buddha and Christ. Man, it's time you got to know what the rest of the world and what these people are saying, these men of God. That you, you've been told these people are evil and they're absolute saints. Buddha lived his life only to help others. Now, the telephone number, if you could call, 609-971-0537. We'll send you information about the church and the tapes. Also, if you would consider, if you like the show and you'd like us to stay on, ask for the envelope. And each month, we'll send you an envelope. And if you can put something in that month, okay. If you can't, maybe next month. But that'll help us to stay here. 609-971-0537. Somebody's calling right now. Thank God. See you next week on The Hidden Meanings. Bye-bye. You better answer that phone, Frank. Bye-bye.